Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, and our personality today is Shmuel Agnon, S. Y. Agnon, born in 1888 and died in 1970. Shmuel Yosef Agnon, known as Shai Agnon, was one of the leading figures in modern Hebrew literature and helped to establish Hebrew as a modern literary language. He was born in Galicia and there he was educated by his father, who, although was a fur trader by profession, had been trained as a rabbi. At that point, the family name was Chachkas, and his father was from a Hasidic background, the more mystical branch of uh, Ashkenazi Jewry, and his mother was from a Mignagdic background, those who opposed the Hasidim. So there was a certain amount of creative tension from Agnon's earliest years. He wrote stories from the age of eight, and at the age of 15, his first was published. He then went to live in Palestine, and he published there a story called Agunot. Agunot are women whose husbands are refusing them a divorce, a get, and that's where his name derives from Agnon comes from Agunot. In 1913, he went to live in Germany, and there he became closely associated with such figures as Buber and Rosenzweig and Gershon Scholem, the great scholar of Hasidut, of mysticism. They regarded Agnon as a sort of curiosity, because they were either entirely secularized or did not profess an orthodox version of Judaism, whereas Agnon remained, at least to a large extent, an orthodox Jew for his entire life. The famous pictures of Agnon always have him with a black kippah resting comfortably on one side of his head, slightly crumpled. He was involved in literary projects in Germany, but came back to Palestine in 1924. And in 1931, he published a novel called Hachnasat Kala, or The Bridal Canopy, and this truly established his reputation as the leading Hebrew writer of his generation. Perhaps his most uh, well-loved book is an anthology, a compilation called The Days of Awe, which has many sources from throughout the Jewish tradition about the holiday period of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. He was recognized by the Jewish state through the Bialik Prize twice and Israel Prize twice, and then awarded the Nobel Prize in 1966. He was late to the award ceremony because it took place on a Saturday night, and he would not attend until Shabbat had terminated, and also until he lit the Hanukkah candles, because that week was also the week of the festival of Hanukkah. And therefore he made a very strong statement that while he was very grateful to receive this prize and the international acclaim it involved, his Jewish commitments came first. The award of that prize showed the international community had full respect for modern Hebrew, for Ivrit, as a language of literature, and all those who have followed in his footsteps and written literary works in Hebrew are indebted to him as the man who showed it was possible. He would like to use more traditional versions of Hebrew words instead of more uh, contemporary Ivrit idioms, and so he not only brought the Hebrew language forward and made it a 20th century language, he also rooted it deeply in its historical past. And in both of these respects, as a carrier of tradition and also as a trailblazer of modern Hebrew, he is an immensely important figure to this very day. Thanks for joining.